Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. This video is going to be covering why getting teleport on your middle laner can be a very effective tactic. I will be explaining this theory quite heavily. I'll also be covering which champions and scenarios you should get it in, and of course, when you shouldn't get it. Let's get into it. First up, the uses and tactics of teleport. Number one, don't fall behind. A lot of passive mids and leaking orientated mids are being played right now. They can easily be pushed out of lane, they can die very easily, and these resultants basically, well, result in them falling behind extremely heavily. Lanes like Twisted Fate can be pushed to no end and harassed down, and even killed easily during the laning phase, and have no way of coming back. If you're behind, and your lane isn't prone to getting kills and not really specialized for it, like a TF, what would Ignite do here? Pretty much nothing. The chance of you getting a kill on a TF versus most lanes is pretty much not going to happen. Whereas teleport can allow you to get back to lane when low so you don't risk death, and hell, even if you do die, you can teleport back to all of the minions under the turret after your enemies push the lane, ensuring you're not falling too far behind in experience or gold. They will only have the kill gold and nothing else on you, ensuring you don't fall behind too heavily. Basically, as soon as you teleport back, you're going to be getting XP and gold. This means it's so hard to shut you down. The actual, the main thing of shutting down a player is not the kill, not the gold of the kill, nor the experience. It's actually pushing the minions under the turret after it, costing them a level and a half usually, especially start games. So, basically, teleport means you cannot be pushed out of lane and you don't fall behind ever at all, realistically speaking. Number two, nullify kill lanes. Killings need to grind you down and, well, kill you, or at the very least, make you lose CS. If you come back safely and then come back with full HP again, even when you're close to death, this diminishes their ability to kill you quite severely. And in a kill lane, this is a mass disadvantage. Anytime you're low and even slightly risk of, uh, there's a slight risk of dying, you can go back to base and come back to teleport into lane and not lose any gold or experience like you normally would, meaning their chance of basically denying you and killing you has been diminished. Normally, they, if they can't kill you, they take the second place prize, which makes you lose CS and experience. With teleport, well, as I mentioned, this again is at a deficit. I can merely teleport back, removing their ability to kill me, or of course make me lose CS. Check me a kill lanes. There is a reason why farm lanes are getting teleport and seem unmovable in many cases. It gets them through the lane and it nullifies the kill lane pretty severely. Number three, get ahead. The previous point can also be used with aggression. When ahead you can get a kill and of course, well, you have to go, you have to eventually leave, and even then you're losing XP and gold. Also, it means when you push it under turret, the turret, they're going to lose a lot of experience and they'll push it back against your turret and you're going to lose gold and experience. Basically, you're not always in lane with your advantage. If you get ganked and get pushed back normally, this would mean the enemy laner has some time to get back into the game and basically, due to this, you're also going to lose experience and gold. This means you're going to fall behind even if you were ahead or even if you're in the middle ground. With teleport, you can keep on staying in lane and maintain your advantage. Even if you, you're really far ahead and the jungler ganks you, if you teleport back in, even if you survived, you can get back and ensure you don't miss any gold and you can constantly keep pressure on that laner. Give, don't give them any breathing room and of course, this also ensures you don't miss any XP or gold, meaning even further you're getting ahead, never missing any gold, never missing any experience, always punishing your laner. This is a very, very beneficial thing to do. Number four, win the push. A medium to high level player, the laner who goes back first loses CS and XP due to the fact that their enemy will push the mini wave under the turret. With teleport, if they try, you can teleport back quickly and push back the lane if they try and push it under your turret. Now, in the time they pushed it, they had to stay in lane, so they're gonna back out normally. And you're now in lane when they're backing, which means you have more than enough time to push it under the turret and make them lose CS. The pushing game is nearly always won by the laner with teleport and can cost your enemies t 10 CS in a go. I've done this on stream and literally counted the CS dying. And it's very, very common that I deny upwards of 20 CS a game just to teleport. I teleport back after they try and push me under the turret. I come back, immediately wipe out two waves, and they're under turret, losing crap tons of CS. In some games, I've denied as much as 50 CS just because I've always stayed in lane due to my teleport and winning the push game. Number five, roam. Of course, the most common strat of this summoner spell is the ability to teleport. If you can teleport, you can roam to other lanes and tally behind them for a couple of free kills, or even flip jungle ganks with your teleport. 
N normally roaming requires good, or more commonly, kind of lucky timing. With teleport you need neither. This is a massive point for champions who can't normally roam, uh, like Ignevia for example, with very low movement speed, or any hard mobility. Normally roaming is just generally a risk for all champions, even if they're good at it. Teleport removes a lot of these risks, meaning you can get a good free roam, and have the ability to back to your lane, or of course even if the roam fails, you can just teleport back and not miss too many CS and of course not risk your turret. Teleporting makes you not lose anything on roaming, which is very very invaluable. Or of course gives you roaming capabilities. Number 6, safe roam. This was mentioned previously, normally when you roam you leave your turret open to attack and maybe lose it. In addition you will lose experience and gold when your enemy pushes it under the turret. With teleport you can roam with a successful or field gank and get back to lane without losing much if any CS and not risking your turret too heavily. This is pretty important on those laners that love to roam very frequently. If you notice you're roaming too much and you're losing your turret you may consider teleport. Number 7, Split Push. For the first time in 5 seasons, mid laners have been meta to Split Push. Now the most fun tactic, normally splitting is a top laner's job because they normally run teleport and they're pretty good at split pushing. Now, also we did have mid laners split pushing, mid laners like Zed for example. But there was a little asterisk beside this. When a Zed split pushes, he's got Ignite, he's ready to kill whoever comes to lane. This is the power of a Zed when he gets ahead. But at the end of the day, if they teamfight bot lane, it's a 5v4. Zed is not going to get to that fight in time because he hasn't got teleport. Only split push if you can get back to the fight or if your laner playing passively and you're generating pressure. But normally, the former is kind of more prevalent. Basically speaking, your team has to kind of back out. Uh, or they just basically engage. In solo queue, they're going to engage. You need teleport to respond to these fights, ensure you're in them. It's a 5v5, not a 5v4. Now, if a Zed gets teleport, he can split push top lane, generate pressure, and if and only if a fight starts, he can teleport back in, ensuring it's a 5v5, and there's no disadvantage of him split pushing. This is absolutely amazing. In addition, you can teleport down to your lane this push, and you can also take the turret. Split pushing is actually possible with a lot of mid laners now with teleport. And if things go really purse shaped and they're coming down for you, you can teleport away. Everything about it means split pushing is actually possible for a mid laner, which is absolutely invaluable. And that's it for the main reason why teleport can be used effectively in lane. Now the next section of good lanes to get teleport. Number one, survival or weak lanes. This is the most common lane to get this. With the ability to teleport back to mid after being ground down and simply not lose XP or gold, they're very hard to shut down. I love getting this in my Anivia who's very vulnerable start game. I get crapped on start game, and just generally speaking, you can get kills but it's rare. Any good player will crap on you. And basically, if I ever get low enough to maybe die, I just teleport back and I'm safe. Even if uh, then they push me under turret and I'm just a little bit low and have no mana, I can teleport back. It ensures I can stay in the lane and very rarely lose a lot of resources. It means I don't lose too much CS, too much gold, too much anything, because I can teleport back. Usually in such a weak start game lane, getting pushed to the turret costs you CS, uh, CS lead and experience lead more importantly in many cases heavily. I actually have started beginning beating bully lanes in CS due to the safety and mentioned mobility teleport gives me and grants me just to not lose CS. Before teleport was a spell, I was actually using this last year not to be one of those people, but I already knew the value of this on weak start game lanes. And basically speaking, now it's uh, quite prevalent, it shows the survival capabilities. It also means I don't have to risk staying in lane versus uh, kill lanes, which are very common versus any weak lane, like Anivia. So, survive. Number 2, Roam Lanes. If you want the ability to roam on a laner that doesn't even have the capability, or hell, you're a very roaming prone based champion or player, you may also consider getting Teleport. Teleport allows you to telegank, it allows you to teleport back to your lane after gank so you don't lose any experience or gold, and just generally speaking, it gives you the capability of just getting around the map quite heavily. If you're a very heavy uh, roam laner, I heavily advise this. I always I like getting this once again on the Anivia if I don't need to use it defensively to teleport down bot lane, for example which is very very effective basically gives you roam capabilities so roam number three possible split push mids once again if your mid has the ability to split push at all uh, the champions like zed or something you may plan on getting teleport to allow to split and join the fight this is only if you're a split push prone champion and player that's very specialized so generally split 
I do want to mention that any lane can, of course, uh, get teleport, like any lane literally at all. These are just the best ones, the most prevalent ones, the ones you should probably get it on, most likely. The other ones, it's just a possibility. I just wanted to mention that. I'm not putting any other lane down. Lanes to avoid getting teleport. Kill lanes. Kill lanes need combat spells to, well, get kills. Ignite or heal are far better in their all in orientated nature than teleport. Teleport used for mobility, survival, and just press a slight advantage. You can't really do that much in terms of kill. It does. It's not a combat spell. It doesn't help you when you're actually fighting. So it's inefficient in the kill lanes that specialize in the task of basically combat. You mainly need ignite to get kills. A teleport can be used, but it's not going to help you too much in getting kills. If you counter your laner or have a heavy kill advantage, or just generally are a kill laner, like a pantheon mid or something crazy, basically go for ignite. Do not try to avoid getting teleport. Burst laners. If you're a burst lane, you will probably need ignite to augment your burst from 100 to 0 to kill someone basically in the back line. An example of this would be Annie, as she's perfect to ensure her burst is as powerful as possible. Basically speaking, if you're a very burst oriented champion, you're probably going to need ignite to do as much physical, quick damage as possible. If you're, it's not really kill and burst, these things are very similar, but generally, if your champion is burst oriented, you'd want as much burst as possible. So try to get ignite if it's at all uh, fits with your champion basically. Push lanes. I may get slack for this, but I feel push lanes don't need teleport. I see people getting this to ensure the push is constant, but beyond the first tier turret, it's kind of pointless. If you lose the push on a lane like Hammerdinger or Malzahar, you're probably playing them incorrectly. You ne don't really need teleport to win the push trade. So on the other end, do you need teleport to roam? Not so much. Push lanes push the lane up so heavily, they have so many openings to roam, they don't know what to do with them. Once again, that means you don't really need teleport to gank, and you can go for something a little bit more advantageous. Once again, one last prerequisite, uh, these lanes to avoid are of course viable with teleport. I mean, you, you can get it, it's, it's fine, it's just you should generally avoid it if possible, or if it's not really fitting your playstyle, just to atone to the champion a little bit more correctly. And that's it for the end of the guide, guys. I just wanted to elaborate and teleport in the middle lane a little bit more. Not many people done it in a comprehensive fashion, so I felt I had to have to elaborate. Regardless, guys, if you like it, like it, dislike it, dislike it. If you like the content, you can subscribe. And if you think it's horrible, I've dropped the ball, I'm totally wrong, and it's Arthur's fault, you can, of course, unsub. I'm totally fair. I also stream on Twitch TV, which is down below. If you like this even more and you think I'm not a total uh, weirdo, um, which I'll hopefully I'll see you guys there. Regardless, as always, have a great day and best of luck in the rift.